Welcome to a tracking tutorial with the Fusion Planar Tracker. I want to track the glass panels on these skyscrapers and want to do some basic compositing with them. You see that they are overlapping, there are reflections on top of these glass panels, they are moving out of the screen. So there are some uh, minor complications that I have to take care of during tracking. However, all in all, this example will not be too difficult. So this is more like a beginner to intermediate level tutorial. You can do this in the free version of DaVinci Resolve or you can do it in Fusion Studio, whatever you prefer. Feel free to download the exercise files from my website to follow along and let's get started. Let me start by tracking the window plane in the front and I just bring in a planar tracker, control spacebar, planar tracker and bring that into the flow. And uh, what I often see people do is just track exactly the area where the effect is supposed to be. I will tell you in a second why this isn't always a good thing, but let's say I want to uh, bring composite something exactly on top of this glass plane, I might be tempted to just put some tracking points uh, on this glass plane, right? So that sounds like a reasonable thing to do. Um, then many people will tell you that if you have here point and hybrid, that hybrid is more accurate than point. Uh, that is usually a good default assumption. And then I can click on set to make the current time as the reference time because uh, where I draw this rectangle from there I'm tracking. Doesn't make sense to start at the beginning because it's not even in the frame in the beginning, right? So I need to go to some place where it's well visible, which is here at frame 386. And from this frame I can now track forward and let me show you what happens. I can zoom in a little bit. And you see it's the edges here are jumping around and here towards the end you see I'm no longer keeping the surface. I'm tracking something very strange. So what went wrong here? The building looks pretty clean, there's high contrast, it's completely in the view, yet the tracker lost its track. Um, the reason here are the clouds, the reflections. So if I look at the image you see uh, even though the building looks pretty easily recognizable, you see there is cloud movement and this cloud movement on the reflection has nothing to do with the movement of the actual building of my, of my glass panel that I want to track. So what can I do? Two things. First of all, if I go back to my frame 386 where I started, first of all there is no reason to track only the um, glass panel itself. If I have other areas, even though I might want to do my final effect somewhere here inside, I can still go outside and take like parts of the building which don't suffer from the reflection and take those into account as well, which could help me get a better result because I have more reliable points uh, around uh, that, that are considered. Um, so I definitely want to take these side areas. I don't want to go up in the top here because there's a different building in the back which will have different perspective movement. So I don't want to take this. I could go further down. I could even take all these balconies here. I could even go till here or so. I only need to make sure everything is in the same plane. Um, although I'm a little bit skeptical of these balconies uh, because they are like slightly in front of the plane that I actually want and there could be like these corners could change a little bit if there's some minor perspective movement. So maybe I just stay above the balconies for now. So I stay here and I can uh, delete all the tracking points that I had before, delete everything from before. And the second thing I can do if I go here into tracker, hybrid point area is my, my usual default. This usually works best, usually works better than point um, because it's not only considering points but also frame by frame comparing the whole area as it's being uh, transformed by the tracker. So the algorithm is typically more precise. However, because it's taking the whole area, it automatically takes the clouds as well. If I don't do this here and only use point, what does point mean? It means the tracker will look for high contrast points in this image. What are the high contrast points here? Well, these uh, intersecting lines here, this grid, this, uh, these are the high contrast points. The clouds don't give that much contrast. So the clouds won't really, uh, I won't get a lot of points from the clouds. And if there are points which as part of the tracking don't make sense to the tracker, it will discard those points. So in this case point may be more stable. 
So I stick to point. Uh, perspective is correct in this case, I think. If you know that your movement is a pure translation or a pure rotation, then you can go to, to these or scale. Uh, however, it's possible that the building, when it moves to the side, that there's also some minor perspective change. So I want to be on the safe side and, and leave that on. Track channel Luma is probably OK here. If you want, you can check the contrast in each channel. and perhaps go to a different channel. In this case, look at the contrast of these lines, but also the contrast of the clouds. So if I go into the blue channel, for example, I have less contrast in the clouds compared to the red channel. So I might argue that the blue channel perhaps gives me uh, a better solution because there's less risk for confusion with the, the clouds, which have a less, less contrast here. So you can uh, play with this. In this case, I think uh, every channel will probably work. Let's see if it works. Let me uh, make sure I'm on my reference frame. And from the reference frame, uh, I can bring in the color image again and track forward, track to the end. And let me see if it works this time. You see where I get my tracking points. And I think I, it, it most likely worked to the end. So you see I have some tracking points on the side. And if I go back to my reference frame, it's uh, easiest to see where the points are. Um, so you see, I'm, I'm having points exactly on these grid points. So you can see these tracking points. And these are the points which give me a good result. OK, track done. I should, uh, to verify this, pin something on top. Then it's really better visible if I have a solid track or not. Let me just switch this to corner pin for a second and use the corner pin. And I will just move it the way I think I will later do the compositing. I want to do some form of projection on top of this building. Uh, and maybe I don't use like the outside corners, but leave like one row of glass panels unaffected and then kind of like a projection in, in the inside or like a big screen which has some, some boundary. So I might do something like this. Uh, use this for a corner pin. And for now, uh, I will just use a, oops, for now I will just Add a background node, attach this, and if you want, give it a color, whatever. And now let me see, does this stick? Yeah, this seems to stick perfectly to the building till the end. Uh, not in the beginning because I didn't track to the beginning. Let me do this now. Let me go back to the track to my reference point. And now I should also track to the beginning. So from my reference, track to the beginning. And in the beginning, the building will move out of frame. But usually, you see that works quite well. Now at the very end, you see there's something strange. Uh, and, and then the track stops here. But until, until this point, it looks pretty good. So if there's, uh, that's again an advantage of tracking a wider area here. Because at the end, my compositing, I only want to do till like here. But I have additional points on the side which help keep that track alive a little bit longer. And now it fails, but that doesn't matter because uh, I'm already out of it. So having a few additional points here is actually helping as well here. That's why I'm tracking wider than necessary. Back to my overall uh, corner pin. Let me just enable it one more time and now see throughout the frame. Yeah, even in the beginning, this is sticking perfectly to the building. So that's a good start. Um, before I do the compositing, I also want to do the building in the back. Now, the building in the back, in principle, works the same way, right? Um, however, there is the problem that the building in the front moves on top of it. So here, I'm getting this building on top of this. So before I start tracking, I want to build myself an occlusion mask, which I can then use to uh, cover up the building here. So I need a mask which covers this. And for this mask, I can actually use my tracker again. So I will first take a mask on the front building and then transform this mask to put it onto uh, whatever I'm doing next with the uh, rear building. That's my plan. I will first go from the corner pin again back to the track here in my planar tracker so that I can export a planar transform. And this is now a transformation which does the exact same transformation that the corner pin uh, 
is doing inside the planar tracker. Now I have it as an outside transformation and I can apply this transformation to a mask, for example. Um, I want to mask off the edge of this building and I can do that with, let's use a quick polygon mask. And actually here it's a bit difficult to see the edge, so I just go, I, I think it's a straight edge, so I will just take it here from the top. Here I can really see it well. And then I'll go down to the bottom here. I can also see it pretty well. So wherever I can see the edge, I hope it's a straight edge, but I think so. So let me take the whole edge, uh, mask it off like this. Um, pay attention, you need to make sure you're on the right frame. Was I on the right frame? Let's see, in the tr planar transform, you see again the reference time. That is the time from where you started the tracking, which I did on frame 386. So I also need to draw my polygon on this frame, 386. Okay, I didn't do a mistake, that's good. So I did draw the polygon on the reference frame because from there I am transforming it. If I draw it on a different frame, uh, it will my, my transform will not uh, match to the original starting point of, of this transform. Um, so now I need to attach this polygon. It is attached, but it's not attached correctly. This is the mask input. I need to attach it to the transform input uh, so that I transform my polygon, not mask off my transform operation. So pay attention to this. Polygons sometimes go to the wrong input uh, easily. So this way my mask should be transformed. So if I look at the mask uh, and see what's happening, so you see the mask is um, being transformed. Uh, however, I'm not done yet with my masking here. So this will work here to the end. I, I masked off this edge here and this should be fine. But if I go back, you see um, there are some parts of the building here, this part of the building, which is also hiding this covering up some parts and which don't belong to this edge. There are just a few frames where my up till here. So here I have my final edge, that's fine. But in these few frames here, I am covering up the back building, not with the edge of the front building, but with some parts behind the edge, like from here. Um, and I, I, I won't be able to track this properly because it's not directly linked to this front surface nor to the back surface. There's something in between here, um, but it's only in like this edge here. It's only there for a few frames, so I won't even bother about tracking. I will just go to the first frame where I see that issue. I will create a polygon here just over the edge like this. I should probably zoom a bit um, and just, you know, build this polygon edge, make it a bit cleaner like this. Uh, on the first frame where I have, where I'm starting to see that issue and then I go to the last part where my edge is. I think that's it's a bit hard to see here and I might have to adjust this later but I will go to the last part and again make sure I have that edge here. It's possible that I didn't see that exactly right, so uh, if, if things go wrong later I might have to fine tune a bit, you know, like always. But let's not spend too much time. I think this should um, work. Uh, let me be sure I don't use this polygon where it doesn't matter. So this polygon I need only in these few frames. So I will animate the level and after the last frame I go one frame further animate and just set it to zero, which just deactivates the polygon. So it's only active till this frame, one frame later level is animated. Same in the beginning, I will animate the level here, go one frame back, um, you can just use the keyboard, one frame back, animate to zero. So my polygon is only active here and I still need to bring it in. You can use a channel boolean, a mat control, whatever you want. Um, let me use a bitmap tool. There are like 100 different ways in Fusion to combine masks. Let me use a bitmap tool. This takes the image from here. So after the planar transform, it's technically an RGB image, which now is being by the bitmap tool transformed into a pure alpha channel image, so to speak. So uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just um, a conversion of the data type. But the point what it does is now that it's in the bitmap, I can uh, attach it. So I can attach this to the polygon. Uh, I couldn't do that before. You can't do that directly from the transform. From the bitmap you can attach it to a polygon and then here in the polygon um, I am merging this together which looks about right. Uh, no, that doesn't look right. 
Um, so when the level is off, it's subtracting. So let's not merge. Let's take a maximum. So maximum, yeah. So here my mask comes in, it stays in, and then here it's it's gone anyways. Okay. So that's my combined masks now here out of this polygon two. All this I just made to mask off the area of the building which may be uh, interfering with my rear building. So with this masking, I can now attend to the uh, second building. You know now the general idea. So I will again attach a second planar tracker now for the second building and use that occlusion mask that I just created. So first of all, uh, the planar tracker again, tracker, planar tracker, bring it into the flow. And I create again the polygon for the tracking area in on a frame here. Uh, I'm now on 372. It doesn't matter, just a frame where the whole glass panel is well in the view. And this time I can go definitely down because there's here I can use the building. There are no balconies or anything interfering. I just have the full surface here to track. I use the point, luma, doesn't really matter. Perspective should also be fine. Let me start from here and track from the current frame. Let me track backwards first to the beginning. Sorry, I need to set the frame, set the frame where I built my uh, tracking area. And then from this reference frame, first track backwards. And from first side of it, I think this looks pretty stable. Uh, all the lines here are straight lines mostly. So that's also a good indication that my track is uh, mostly working. If these points are stable and somewhat move in the same direction, that's a, a good sign. And let me go back to my current frame. I didn't attach the mask yet. So let me do that. Attach the mask here to the occlusion mask input. I could have done that even before, it shouldn't matter, but now I definitely need it because now I'm tracking in the other direction. So let's see what's happening now if I track to the end from, again, from my reference point to the end. And you see that my tracking points um, kind of get uh, squeezed the area where they're tracked. So I only have tracking points in the valid area and not here on, on this building. So that gets smaller and smaller, that's good. Um, but there's also some problem here. I might have a few incorrect points. No, I see some red points here. Um, that should be fine. So red just means that they are sorted out. Oh, I think I forgot to extend this polygon here. So that could be one issue that I have some red points, which are just uh, points that uh, the tracker discards. That's fine. Um, but you see that somehow my a uh, rectangle here, my polygon, uh, gets changed in perspective a bit. So that doesn't make so much sense. And then here it completely loses the um, orientation and it's there's some incorrect perspective shift towards the end. Now it makes sense that it's getting more and more difficult for the tracker towards the end to get this uh, accurately because, well, I'm getting in a very small range of of points here. So there isn't maybe not enough reliable information anymore to, to calculate the track accurately. Um, but all in all, this seems to have some impact here. Now there are two things. I can try to adjust my um, occlusion mask, see if that is the reason. Maybe uh, I can get some more points down here where perhaps my mask was not accurate. Um, another way that I can do is I can uh, actually change the area in which I'm tracking. So let me first go back to until the point where I definitely have a good track. So till here, I know I have a good track and perhaps even further. But somewhere where it's starting to, yeah, let me start from here. So somewhere after this where the occlusion starts, there I'm somewhere getting into trouble, especially towards the end. So instead of uh, letting this full occlusion here on the complete side, instead of letting that happen, I will just reduce the area here and just use only half the building. I can still do my effect on the full building. I'm just using this part of the surface for reference um, and see if I have the full area not occluded if I get a better result. Um, this occlusion mask, typically it's used like if people run into the scene or if objects are crossing. Um, in this case where like the whole plane is moving out, 
um, it's possible that it's not working that accurately here. At least that's my, my suspicion. But let me just show you this. I wanted to show you this trick anyway, so it's a good opportunity. Um, I will just take half the building here and use this to track to the end. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely now, it looks pretty stable until definitely while the whole area here is in focus, I get nice tracking points, straight lines, that looks good. And then to the end, I assume that I'm running again into the same issue. Yeah, so here again, something is a bit strange. So I will go till the last point where this worked well. And let me do this maybe one more time. I will again reduce this a bit, perhaps like this. And I will also now change from perspective to translation. So I know that the perspective shift of this building, if there is any at all, will be very minor. And I know that especially towards the end, I saw that there is some form of perspective distortion happening to my tracker. So for this end piece, I want to disable the perspective motion and just keep a simple translation, um, which should be accurate enough for a few frames. And I hope that this way I, I get even the last frames. Let me try that. So again, let me track to the end from here. And perhaps I bring this into full view. And let me see. So these are the last frames now. And okay, that looks pretty good. So I think I might have a stable track here. I will now really see if it's stable once I put something on this. Like before, I can go from the track to the corner pin, attach a background node to the corner pin. This time, maybe let's make it green to get some variation here. Bring it into the view. Pin it to the points like I did before. Okay. These are my four corners that I want to have. And now let's have a look through the timeline if this sticks. So in the beginning, I'm not worried, but you see it sticks very well. And let me see now towards the end where we have the overlap. Of course, it's now overlapping here, but I think it's stable. Uh, to see that even better, I should mask it off and I can use my occlusion mask also to mask off this. So I will just use the occlusion mask and attach it to the effect mask input. And is this working? So let's see side by side. So right now I don't see anything. This is my occlusion mask. The effect mask needs uh, the opposite. So it needs white where I should see the effect. So I need to invert this. So let me go into my planar tracker and do here in the settings, apply mask inverted. So now I should have, I have to be careful. Sometimes the viewer is not updated fast enough. So let me disable the second viewer again uh, and look at only one. Okay, so this looks pretty good. All right, I think there's a tiny little bit of sliding at the very end. So somewhere from, so until here it looks stable. And then in the last frames here, the, the edge seems to slide a little bit. And this I can just fix manually. So if I have something like this left over, which I did not get right from the track, I will just go into the last frame where it matches. Let's say here, I go into my corner positioner from the planar track. And in the corners, in the corner pin, I will just uh, animate these points. So I will just animate all these points on this frame. And let's also look at the bottom point. This looks good. And then a few frames later, shortly before there's nothing left to see, I will just see, and I will just manually fix this. Just go, I just need to bring it a little bit down and I'll bring this point roughly down so that the perspective is still correct. And here, actually here I'm still accurate. The bottom seems to work. So just keep it this way. And now if I look again over the last frames, now I should really have, yeah, I should really have a 
pretty good solid corner here on the edge. This was it for the tracking part. Now I have tracked a green and a blue rectangle. Maybe I should put some image in there and do a tiny little bit of compositing just to have a nice finish for this tutorial. So let me bring in some footage. So from the media pool, I just bring in a media clip via media in in DaVinci Resolve. Let me see what I have here. So I have um, this guy that I want to now bring in and the clip uh, clip length doesn't match. So I have here my, my in point should be at frame 50. So I can attach the global in point. So I have edited in the edit page a bit. So I'll bring this in a bit later and then um, not hold the last frame, but I will loop so that uh, it it's looping around. So all right, so I have uh, a clip which is long enough. Of course, you can use whatever clip you want for this, doesn't matter, or any still image will do. And I can attach this guy now to the corner pin and get him now here. Uh, you see he's terribly squeezed because here I have a normal 16 uh, by 9 image and here I have something more vertical. So instead I will crop this image just with a simple crop node. I can um, crop to the guy. Let's try to get the aspect ratio roughly matching. Um, I won't do any like scientific measurement. I will just uh, look left and right if I think that the aspect ratio is is roughly the same if it if it looks good. Sorry, not Y, X offset. So offset and some crop and I can get him here in full screen, something like this. So does that work? Or maybe maybe a bit more not too much. Okay, so now I have him large on this skyscraper and I should probably change the uh, blend mode a bit. So now he is merged over. Uh, I have in the corner pin there is the merge operation. So instead of normal I can go to, I can try. So screen, brightens, multiply, darkens, overlay is like a mixture. So um, perhaps Overlay may be good or multiply and you can reduce the gain or perhaps I go for an overlay and I might still adjust this a bit with a color correction. So I could uh, bring in a brightness and contrast here, sorry, brightness and contrast into the flow and then do a little bit of gamma correction. Maybe bring it a bit up. Let's see how this looks like in the rest of the scene. Yeah. Perhaps something like this uh, might look good for this kind of screen or projection. So I still need to see a lot of reflections from the sky on top of it. It's uh, the, the glass still shows through, but at the same time I have um, this projection. Um, one more thing, I always like to look at edges. So here, uh, depending on your story here, if this is like a kind of a projection, maybe you want it to be a bit soft at the edge. Um, if you want something like this, then I would uh, take the composite out of the tracking. So here I have my planar tracker, which is doing the compositing, which is doing the merge, but you can take it out. So I can do a uh, merge mode to foreground only. So normally it does foreground over background. So it does the merge automatically. If I do foreground only, um, I only get um, here the foreground which I should now set to normal and not to overlay because overlay needs the background. But if I do foreground only set it to normal, I have only the corner pin and I can now disconnect this and merge it myself with the merge outside of the planar tracker. So one more node, but this way I have some additional control. So first of all, I can go back, set this to overlay the way I did before. If I want, I can put the brightness and contrast even out. I can put it here. It doesn't matter. I'll leave it here um, before or after. Uh, I can leave this here, but I can do one more thing. I can do a blur now and blur this image over its edges. So if I do a blur of a few pixels and bring this in, you see that's way too much. So maybe just like this. So you see I get a blur on the edge. Now I'm not only getting a blur on the edge, I'm blurring actually everything, but I can mask off the blur with a mask of the inside. And if I attach the same output here as a mask to the blur, I am uh, 
masking off something and I'm masking off the inside, but I need the, I want the edge, I want the outside. So I go into the settings and apply the mask inverted. So this way I have hopefully some blur. Let me just go into the alpha channel. It's a bit more visible here. So in the alpha channel, you see uh, how far my blur actually goes. And then I can adjust this like this, bring it a bit down, a bit up. And here I should see um, the effect. So no blur with blur. So I can feather this out a bit, maybe even a bit more like, like this. Okay, um, so that's, that's one option. You might uh, actually, if you're going to go really nicely, you would color correct this a bit and bring this a bit up, maybe uh, only on the blurred area, you could intensify this a bit so that you don't have this kind of jump. And uh, there are like hundreds of ways how you can um, improve edges further and come up with uh, all different kinds of things. But just to get give you an idea, so if I do that track, it doesn't mean I need to do all in one. I don't need to do everything in the planar tracker. Sometimes I just retake it out uh, do my merge manually and then you can do different operations like the blur or any edge treatment in between and um, thereby improve your composite. Okay, um, I leave it at this. I will also do uh, the same with the background and then I can leave you with my final solution. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, let me know. If you don't, let me know what you do need to know and see you next time. Thanks for watching. My name is Bernd. Cheers.